With G6PD deficiency, let's look at the downstream issue. And the downstream issue is that we need to take cellular stress in the form of hydrogen peroxide and turn it into something benign. Mm -hmm. In order for us to turn it to something benign, we need a couple ingredients. Imagine it like a cookbook. We need NADPH and we need reduced glutathione. Those are the salt and pepper in order to take something actually harmful to the cell and turn it into something a little bit less harmful. Mm -hmm. So glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, also known as G6PD, is going to take the glucose 6-phosphate from glycolysis. Remember, glycolysis started with hexokinase, glucokinase. You take the glucose 6-phosphate from glycolysis, and you are going to then make NADPH. Mm -hmm. Well, NADPH is then going to transfer, get transferred the H plus from oxidized and then turn it into reduced. And that's reductase. Remember that MCAT mnemonic, Leo Ger, lose electron, that's oxidation, gain an electron, glutathione reductase, gain an H plus, that is Ger, gain an electron, that is reduction. Mm -hmm. So if somebody asks you on your USMLE or NBME, what plugs into the pentose phosphate shunt? Well, it's G6P. And that transfers electrons to NADP positive. And that makes NADPH. And the NADPH transfers the electron into oxidized glutathione. And that enzyme is glutathione reductase. So Mm -hmm. interestingly, just as a critical thinking point, glutathione reductase deficiency presents the same way as G6PD because you can't have the end goal. Right. In G6PD questions, in glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency questions, it is always going to be worded as some sort of stress by a medication, by a food, and then bam, you get hemolysis, breaking of the actual RBC. Mm -hmm. And so when you have reduced glutathione, you can take oxidant stress and turn it into water. So USMLE point, no G6PD, no reduced glutathione, oxidative stress wins and you get hemolysis. Right. What are your stressors in the test question? So don't memorize this list. What you got to do is you got to say a patient who had a Mediterranean meal, a patient who is treated for a urinary tract infection, a patient who is going to be on anti-malarial prophylaxis before a global health trip, or a patient Mm -hmm. who is had an abnormal PPD. Okay. If we build on this concept, we got to understand that the pentose phosphate pathway has the non-oxidative branch. What we just talked about was the oxidative branch. So going back here, what happens to this 6-phosphogluconate? Well, this 6-phosphogluconate turns into ribulose 5-phosphate. And this big picture ends up going to be the backbone of nucleotide synthesis. That's why what might be nice is that after the non-oxidative studying of the pentose phosphate pathway, you should probably end up going to study the purine and pyrimidine synthesis because the ribose 5-phosphate ends up actually coming back. Mm -hmm. This integrates into nucleotide synthesis. And so what is the most important enzyme in the non-oxidative pathway? That's transketolase, and that needs thiamine. Vitamin B1. Exactly. And so that could integrate into this fact that patients with wet berry berry or patients who have alcoholism are going to have issues with making nucleotide precursors so they can have abnormality in their RBCs. That's why sometimes in test questions, you see alcoholism being related to a macrocytic anemia because your nucleotide precursors are messed up. That's why sometimes your nucleotide precursors are going to be messed up in your neurons. And that's why you can get a Korsakoff-like syndrome it all kind of integrates into this pathophysiology. And so what we'll conclude here with our discussion of the pentose phosphate pathway is what is this role of NADPH? NADPH 
Consider NADPH as an anabolic enzyme or anabolic substrate. It helps synthesize fatty acids. It helps synthesize cholesterol. It helps synthesize steroid hormones. And so if these are the above functions for NADPH, the organs that the pentose phosphate pathway is most active in are going to be the lactating mammary glands because again, you need a lot of cholesterol, steroids, fatty acids to make the milk, the mm -hmm. liver, and the adrenal cortex, as well as the gonads. And so okay. we will see NADPH as you transition into studying the cholesterol synthesis pathway.